is not sponsored. Let's talk shutter speed, aperture, ISO. All three things that you need to know how to use without even thinking about it if you're doing photography. Let's compare it to this bowl of cereal. Let's call it the shutter speed. I could eat it like this. It's not the best, but it works. It's definitely better now. Let's call that milk the aperture, but I'm still missing something. Spoon. Now all three, a much better experience. I can enjoy this cereal the way it was meant to be enjoyed. It's gonna work better for me. It's easier to eat, tastes better, makes sense. All three things complement each other perfectly. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to yet another Two Minute Tuesday. It's so great to have you here and see all of your smiling faces. Today we're talking camera basics. Gonna try and keep it to two minutes, can't make any promises, but I'm feeling good about it. The serial analogy to help those of you that don't understand that shutter speed, aperture, and ISO all complement each other. You can't use one without using the other properly. You need all three of them. So to take great photos and be fully manual and proficient with your camera, your new camera, or maybe your old camera, maybe you're getting back into photography, those three things, that's six, those three things are super important and they go together. So let's start with shutter speed. Shutter speed controls so many aspects of photography. If you wanna get someone running fast paced and you wanna stop that action and make sure that photo's clear, maybe you're taking photos of your kids or your pets and they're running around really fast, you wanna make sure that they're not blurry, having a high shutter speed opens that shutter and closes it really, really fast, stopping the action. So let's throw two minutes on the clock. Good luck to me. So breaking it down one by one, shutter speed. Here's an example of me just doing a straight up jumping jack to keep things easy. We'll shoot this at one over 320, so that's 320th of a second. Oh, that's super fast. So you'll notice everything is nice and sharp, good to go. Now if we shoot that photo again, let's drop the shutter down to a 60th. That's much slower. So it's opening and closing over more time, but that also lets my limbs and things move in frame because that shutter's not capturing it fast enough. So you'll notice there's a bit of image blur. A good example of a shutter speed moving from fast to slow is take a look at this small little waterfall here with the water pouring over. A fast shutter speed stops that action. You can see the water clearly. But if you slow that shutter speed down to even like half a second, it captures half a second of that flow of water, making it look like this. So you can see how shutter speeds affect not only just portraits, but landscapes and other items as well. Now, aperture kind of has two uses in photography. Yes, it lets a ton of light in so that you can get those nice bright images and have fast shutter speeds, but it's also gonna change what's happening in the background. If you're shooting a landscape, you wanna be able to see that whole entire landscape sharp, perfectly clear, good to go. So you wanna make sure that aperture is set to something like eight or 11 or 22 or really, really high to make sure you're capturing detail. So look at this portrait, for example. This was captured with the aperture at F14 is what it's called. So that's a really, really small opening of light. So all the detail is there, everything in the background, but we don't wanna see all of this stuff in the background. It's not the most pleasing background. So if we open that aperture all the way up, as wide as it goes to 1.4, it's gonna make everything in the background not in focus. Now, we're gonna have tons of light coming in because it's opened all the way. So we'll have to make that shutter speed faster so it's not capturing as much light. And then when you combine those two things together, you get an image like this. The background is more shallow. It puts more focus on the subject, the portrait, the item that you're shooting, the person that you're shooting. And that's where those two things come together. Now, like we've mentioned before, different lenses are going to give you different results. Not every single lens can open up super wide. Some are longer than others, some are short. There's a myriad of different lenses that do different effects. That's why we change lenses. That's why certain lenses evoke certain emotions. That's why certain lenses are used for sports. Certain lenses are used for documentaries and movies. And that's what makes this whole art form fun is because there's so many different tools to tell so many different types of stories depending what you're interested in. Now where ISO comes into play is mostly in low light situations, indoors, at night. And then on top of that, if we don't have enough light, we can crank up the ISO. 
for those of you that used to shoot film, back in the film days, you would buy certain ISO films, 400 ISO film, 800 ISO film. The best way to explain ISO is kind of like explaining it as fake light. It's the sensitivity to the image sensor, the actual device in your camera that's capturing the photo. When we're changing the ISO, we're changing the sensitivity of that sensor to light. So just think of it as fake light. If you're inside, you've got your shutter speed where you want it, your aperture is as wide open as it can be, but you still need a little more light, but you got nothing else, you can crank that ISO and technically add fake light to your photo. It brightens it up. But with each increment of ISO, the brighter it gets, the more you use it, the worse the image becomes, the more grainy it becomes, the more pixelated it becomes. Noisy images is what it's commonly referred to. Now the better the cameras, the better they are in low light. The higher ISOs they can shoot at without getting grainy or noisy. So my recommendation to you is that if you are beginning in photography and you are learning these things, learn them well. Make sure that you know your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. When you know those three things so well, you can look at a scene, you can look at a photo and instantly say, ah, oh, my shutter speed was too high. Ah, oh, my aperture wasn't open wide enough. That lens isn't fast enough. I could probably bump the ISO. When you know by just looking at a photo how to fix it, that's when you should move on to the next step. It's like any other skill in your life that you've just forgotten about. Like when you put your shoes on, you don't think about how you're putting them on, you just put them on and you go. So that's it for me guys. I hope you liked this video. I hope you got something out of it. I'm gonna try and sprinkle in camera basics videos here and there. Um, there's a large audience and I don't think everyone is at the same skill set. So I think it's important to try to kind of curate some of this content to help people that are further along and people that are just starting or somewhere in the middle or maybe not sure if they're interested. And that's the reason for a video like this because I realized I don't have anything like this. So I hope it helped you out. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already. And, and I will see you guys in the next video. <sighs>